You've put in the hours to learn to code, you've updated your resume, and you've submitted job applications again and again, but you're still struggling to get that call back or actually turn an interview into a job offer. And you're not alone. These companies have extremely low acceptance rates. Lots of people apply, but very few of them are invited for interviews, and even less people actually get in. So what is it about them that you or me could be missing? You might be tempted to think, oh, they're just better developers or whatever and call it a day, but that's rarely the biggest reason. Recruitment processes are far from perfect and the market for candidates is really crowded, so luck plays a big factor. Then the question is, how do you make the most out of your chances? You make it easy for companies to say yes and hard to say no. In other words, you build FOMO. And that doesn't start with your resume or even within the interview rounds. You can start getting ahead of the competition right now. I do know that the words personal branding are a bit of a cliche in this day and age, but it's a very useful concept to consider when looking to stand out in a crowded market. And it really is just about creating a public facing image of yourself and your work to enhance your reputation and build your own network of connections. Increasing your visibility and desirability within the developer community is an extremely underrated way to get your foot in the door among tech companies. So it's really in your best interest to put some time and effort into this. And I know you might still be a bit hesitant. I know I was at some point. After all, it's time you could be using to lead code or study logarithmic time complexity. So look at it from this lens. Take Formula One as an example. It's lights out and away we go. Where engineering performance is extremely important. That's what determines how fast your car is and the results you're able to achieve. The thing is, even with such high stakes in the technical department, if a team neglected their investments on branding and their public image, yes, they might do well in the first couple of races with the extra money they were able to pour into engineering, but they would be unable to get things like sponsorships or attract the right talent, and that would keep them from developing their car much further. So other teams would be beating them towards the end of the season. In the long run, the extra investment on technical development wouldn't pay as well as getting a marketing and PR team. So think of this as time spent building that marketing and PR team that will make the time you spend learning the technical side so much more worth it in the long run. As Jeff Adwood, co-founder of Stack Overflow, puts it, mere competence in a technical discipline is not enough. That's the minimum required to keep your head above water. Determine what you want your area of expertise to be. Note how I'm not saying that it needs to be your area of expertise already. That's because it's totally fine to start building your personal brand even if you're not yet an expert in something. If there's a specific area of coding or a technology that you're particularly experienced at or interested in, make a mental note of it and let's start building on it. And don't feel too much pressure about this. You can always pivot onto something else, but it's useful to start with some sort of niche because tech communities tend to be built around these and you wanna use this to your advantage, but more on that later. The next thing you'll wanna start doing is thinking about providing value to others. Chances are you don't have an audience yet if you're not some sort of content creator, but it's useful to start thinking about what you find to be valuable bits of information about your niche. Even if you're at a point where you're still mostly learning from others, it's useful to start thinking, okay, if someone who's interested in the same stuff came across my social profiles, how could I make it worth their while to follow me? How could I help them get better at this thing? And that gives you a really good starting point. Some examples of things you can share are tweet threads from other engineers, blog posts explaining something you're learning or find interesting, tech news relevant to your niche, and even some sort of breakthrough in one of your own projects. Maybe you recently figured out how to make a cool CSS animation or you found a React library that solves the exact problem you had. It's pretty open-ended, honestly. I know this one's thrown around a lot, but that's for good reason. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but creating a personal website adds value in at least two ways. First, potential employers are able to very easily learn about you and your most relevant experience. And second, fellow engineers get a centralized place to learn about you and find some of the valuable content you've started sharing in the previous step. That's a pretty big motivator for people to follow you or to want to engage with you, which in turn builds up your network and pulls you further into the developer community. And just because you can code doesn't mean that you need to code the website from scratch. I've been down that road before and the amount of time it takes is definitely something considerable. If you wanna do it as a learning exercise, by all means, go ahead. But if not, a simple website using an existing platform like Squarespace or Wix will work. Okay, so we talked about sharing content that is valuable, but there's another side of that, which is to engage with the community that you wanna be a part of. There's developer communities in pretty much all social networks. Twitter is a big one, for example. I would just recommend to do some research and find some accounts that mostly talk about your niche. Follow people and start interacting with what they share. Reshare some of the content that you find valuable and reply with your thoughts as well to start a conversation. Not only will you start gaining visibility in that community, but it's also a good way to learn your craft and find similar niches. This one can be really impactful if you find the time to do it. 
Public forums like Stack Overflow are a really big reason companies are able to build software at the scale and speed they do. It's a way of bringing together the expertise, experience, and struggles of thousands of other developers in a centralized place. And that gives other developers hope that maybe someone out there already struggled with what they're struggling. That makes this one a really impactful way of helping people. And you can always cross-pollinate your Stack Overflow presence with the rest of your social profiles and website. I'm brainstorming at this point, but I could see it very impactful to have a section on your website saying how many developers you've helped and maybe even include a link to the answers you've provided. Gaining this visibility and being a part of the developer community will definitely put you on the radar of tech companies and recruiters. But unfortunately, our job is not done yet. You still have to nail those interview rounds, which is why I created a video about this a while back to make sure you do just that in case you want to watch that next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.